Okay, so we got quite a bit of stuff to paint today. I have a very, very ambitious critique um, here. Ooh, it's going to be a big one, but I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try anyway. If I fail, I fail. At least the fundamentals are discussed. But before we do all of that, let's talk about events currently happening in the community. We have a challenge, a community challenge, super fun, super great, super awesome. It is... Um, that hopefully appeals to all skill levels. It appeals to all styles of uh, themes that you guys are interested in. Not all styles because we're not really a style oriented or style welcoming uh, group here. Um, if, if style is style, then it's basically color style or or brush style. But apart from like realism, we don't have styles in this community. So keep that in mind, you guys. Um, Elemental character design. So you have a luminescent elemental in a dark light environment. You're supposed to be, basically it's a very nice, fun texture study of glowing or um, luminescent or uh, subsurface scattering material that has come together as an element and your character in the shape of a human and that is your character. Read through it, download the resource pack, you have some references, you can get references of your own as long as they're similar to this. It is due August 6th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be on vacation after that from the 8th to the 22nd, I'm going to Puerto Rico, um, so that's going to be really fun. Uh, my flight is sometime in the weekend, uh, but I do need to prep. <clears throat> so we have uh, two weeks to finish. If you haven't started, you may have some time to blueprint and get some feedback from your community here on Reddit. If you haven't joined Reddit, go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon to join. And uh, read the rules and join. I think the rules are somewhere over here. I'm not sure where the rules are. Um, but yeah, where are the rules? Um, but they're here somewhere. Model, detail, Maybe I can't, I don't know. Um, but uh, that's it. Please join it, have fun, enjoy, and I will be making a post very soon for any future challenges you may have. I also, I, I like during the fall season, something like September, October, actually October, November, December, start doing some seasonal festive challenges. We may be able to fit one more challenge for August. I won't be here, but August, September ish, you'll be able to fit one more cool little character design challenge. But after that, things get a bit more festive, a bit more spooky, a bit more holiday ish. Um, and uh, this year, I may have you guys. I've been really thinking about a cool take on Santa Claus. So find like a really, really cool, interesting way of redesigning Santa. Not the Coca-Cola Santa, something else, something cool, a gift giver, uh, uh, you know, a loving uh, saint of sorts, but they look different and they're a wizard. Yes, that's really cool. I love that. I, I want to like try to bring everything back to fantasy whenever I can, uh, back to like a Skyrim version of, of the world. Um, so a cool wizard Santa Claus is typically what I'll be assigning you guys around that time. Uh, last year I did like a different take on elves. I just love Christmas. I'm a child at heart. So I love doing things that are Christmas related during the holidays like November, December. Uh, and then the, in the um, uh, fall challenge, so for Halloween, I will be assigning, last year I assigned creepy creatures I think. A creature design. Uh, I want to continue with character designs onwards. So I don't want. I want to. I don't want to deviate outside of character design because you guys love designing characters, and I want you guys to have fun, and I want there to be more submissions. Um, so <clears throat> for Halloween, it might be a, a redesign um, of the headless uh, horseman or something. A Halloween uh, character like the Dracula or the Mummy that you redesign, that you make original for like a game or something like that. So it's going to be a lot of character design stuff, um, but that's where I am right now. Redesigns of existing characters uh, and trying to push the originality. And that's the common theme lately that we're trying to be as original as possible, even with the elemental character design. I like forbade, flat out forbade a magma golem that is genderless that looks like the golems from Hercules. I haven't forbade magma and I haven't forbade lava and fire. So you guys can still do elementals with those. You just have to be original in the way you've delivered them. Uh, but like as for a redesign of the Titans from Hercules, no. Because uh, they're elementals basically. The Titans from Hercules. Disney's Hercules. 
Uh, so, sorry, excuse me. Uh, so I want you to uh, think about that. If you guys want to do something else for those, that's that's okay. We can try to find another topic. But a Santa redesign into a wizard is actually something I'm not gonna shake on. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change my mind on. I think it's really fun and really cool, and I can't wait to see you guys designing old haggard wizards and cool wizards and wizards of different elements. And oh, I can't wait. Uh, so that's going to be something for the future. So thank you guys, everyone, by the way, for tuning into the live streams. I really appreciate it. Um, it means the world to me when you guys do. If you want to support me on Patreon, I don't work with anything other than Patreon. Patreon's my source of support, my stability, uh, my livelihood at the moment. Um, so if you want to support me there, that's where I get um, the time to, to, to bring all this to you guys and, and keep this community alive. If everyone here on this stream supported for $5, we'd be set. We'd be good. Um, so if you guys want to have a, have a look at that, please do. Um, it means the world. Uh, when uh, when you guys show your support and you get something in return uh, that's never just whatever you guys get all my work all my personal work PSDs JPEGs brushes uh, access to the discord assignments challenges like the ones we're doing right now but every month of the year you guys get a cool challenge from me or homework as an apprentice uh, you get video time lapses with commentary, my own personal thoughts on all the personal work that I do in live stream. I don't upload any live streams. They're all preserved for patrons. Um, so you guys can help me through there and you can keep this community alive through that. All right, let's move into this really, really crazy, ambitious paint over. <clears throat> okay, so we've got a lot of problems. You have light rays that make no sense. Uh, you have a gradient at the top. You have clouds that are not doing anything for your drawing. You've got a weird little orb of reflection down here at the bottom, which is not doing much. You got a side view facing character. You got difficult to read waves, but they look okay, I guess. So you're using nighttime light on a midday or end of the day overcast. Uh, 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 day, like light environment, you're using nighttime glowing in the in the in the the the, the, the what's it called the lighthouse. Uh, so there are problems here, big ones, and it's a lot of fundamentals to cover. But as with every critique, we start with the biggest pieces. We start with the largest components of the world of the drawing, and that and those are what help guide us towards fixing the smaller problems. So write that back to me. Start with the largest problems. Start with the largest, and the, usually the largest problems are the largest things in the world, which is the earth and the surface of the ground beneath the character, the sky and the color and the, and the atmosphere in the uh, sky above the character, um, the light environment, the time of day. The largest pieces are what you adjust first, and they help you with the smallest pieces. So <clears throat> let's start there. So this sky color is bothering me because it should be a little bit more universal. Um, the more simple you keep all of these components, the more you'll get uh, uh, like a better um, read of the time of day. So whenever I'm doing like crazy ambitious pieces like this, I kind of tend to have a difficult time finishing my sentences because <laughs> I just get lost in the lasso or whatever it is that I'm doing, so I'm sorry if I sound terrible while I'm putting together these sentences. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, I haven't read the comments yet, but in the comment section on YouTube, please comment. Tell me what you think about Wizard Santa Claus and, and, and different redesigns of characters for future challenges. Challenges keep the community together. Um, and I love when we do them. I love when you guys join them. Um, it kind of just uh, gives us something extra to do other than 14 day challenges and form studies and we do them together and we have fun that way. Okay. Oh man. It blubbed up. So. Oh. So I'm gonna deselect. What exactly is happening here? Alright, that's okay, I can redo it. <clears throat> so the community challenges, why they're so important is because they get you experience without having to look for commissions, right? So who here in the in the audience um, 
uh, wants to work on commissions, but they're just not getting them. I remember when I used to do commissions, I'd be like, anybody, just give me anything so that I could get experience doing that topic because I know I can't come up with it on my own. So I need somebody to hire me to give me these topics of, of uh, interest and I can just, um, you know, learn, get experience. I, I wouldn't decide to paint a desert landscape until somebody hired me to. Uh, so that's when I have really started to get experience when I was hired. Um, so that's what I want to offer you guys here in this community. Just opportunities to change your portfolios as much as possible. And that's what these community challenges are for. They're really fun. They're really exciting. If you're shy about, you know, showing your skill level, don't be. Everyone here is making mistakes. Everyone here is not the best. Everyone here, including me, have a lot to learn. Uh, so just be aware of that. And everybody leaving dislikes on my videos <laughs> and live streams, I'm not going to antagonize you. I'm just going to wonder why you're doing that. There's something in you right now that's denying the fact that this is a community for education and that critique is important in the development of anyone's life, um, especially artists. So we need to start thinking about that, how critique can benefit us. Um, and anything that you ever get critiqued on, it's not just... Or maybe you're getting critiqued on your behavior or something like that. Um, it's good to get critique. We're always growing and nobody's perfect. And if you're under the delusion that you're perfect, wake up, buddy. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm deciding on a really cool time of day. And I'm using smudge tool here. To, um, to kind of... Just give this guy a little bit more of that hazy shapelessness of low cast clouds through the haze of falling rain, or of rain that just fell, or evaporating rain. I'm gonna get rid of um, this this kind of like outline you have everywhere. You just have this outline, and I'm not sure what it is. I'm just gonna chug some water. Um, the sand needs to be a little bit more pale the further it gets from what's making it wet. And so we're going to have this nice little area where the sand is just a little bit dark. Alright, so that's a nice little level. And then I'm going to blend and kind of distort most of this wave structure. And you really do need to look up like waves and what they do. Um, I'm going to grab some of this foam and just paste it here. So what I'm doing is I'm working on what's bigger than the character because that's really what's going to help us shape this piece. We have an environment. You always paint the environment before the character. If not uh, technically, we're doing it theoretically. So if you paint the character first, you're thinking about the environment. And I'm going to show the different levels of the wetness here on the on the water. And I'm going to clean that up, and then I'm going to show where the water is foaming, just like so. And I am very tempted to uh, just make sure the sand is bright all the way around. Desktop. I'm going to keep this Photoshop layer saved and I'm going to keep saving because Photoshop likes to crash lately. The watercolor um, really needs to be changed significantly. So you still have a flat horizon when you have waves. You still need a flat horizon and the only thing changing that flat horizon is large massive waves and if the waves are humongous enough to distort and go above the horizon line that child would be nowhere near the beach. So you still need to show the horizon line and then the elevations and the different waves you can show towards the front. And the further we get into the horizon the closer we get to the color of the horizon uh, of the sky. And so that water has atmospheric perspective applied to it. 
I am going to correct this little thing you've got going here. So this is really cool and you can keep it, but you cannot keep it plus all of this because that is not accurate to our light environment right now. A light environment will allow the glow of the, uh, what's it called, lighthouse. It's just not a word I'm saying all the time. But it won't allow the ray, unless it's super foggy, and maybe it is here. And we can throw in a little light ray, but it cannot be drowning. It cannot be that massive. And in the face of all of this, we have a very, very dark silhouette of this lighthouse. And this brush that I'm using, if you like it, it's available on my store at istabrak.com. Okay, and I'm just, um, so we're going to show the glow within just fine, but we're not going to be showing any excessive highlighting. Because you chose this time of day, the kid, it's not sunset yet, it's a little before sunset, enough that there's just a grayness everywhere. Um, and it's just nice and in the distance and look at this looks like clean easy breezy cover girl That's, that was terrible and then we have that atmospheric perspective if these are stars well gosh I hope they're not they were in the wrong spot okay so we have really believable value shifts here and now we can start bringing in some uh, change of value. So what I'm going to do is get dodge tool right at the start where water is most shallow. And I'm going to bring in some saturation. Just the color of the water is different there. And then I'm going to bring my sponge tool on saturate. I'm going to clean that up. Just bring in some color. I'm going to bring in some color, not in, not a lot of color, that's a 79%, just enough, and I'm going to bring in some color on the midtones on the areas here. I'm going to just bring in some saturation out there, just so it's not that close to grayscale. And I'm going to bring back our character, which is a touch too yellow, so I'm just going to desaturate them just a bit. And they're too big. Um, what you want to do is, is maintain your scale. And this character here, the way you design them uh, to be so perfectly s side view, um, has completely flattened the image. And then you over overlarge them, like they oversi you oversize them, and then they also uh, flatten the image. I'm using eraser, so I'm not sure why it's being funny. So. I'm going to fix the perspective as much as I can and talk about what you did here. You gave us rim light, not needed. What you need to do is shade every little form study of these little ripples in his jacket or her jacket along the environment color and then the environment highlighter. So if it's a dark scene, and let's say it's a scene that's like this dark, we need to see less yellow and just more general high ambience shading, meaning there's bounce light everywhere, or the sun passing through the thick layer of clouds. Like it's a massive thick layer when we're having overcast and the world is dark. That's a very thick layer of clouds. Um, and that means that the light, instead of traveling in one ray, is dispersed through the clouds and then not allowing any one cast shadow to exist. And we didn't even have a cash out of beneath the character. We just had this big glowing thing. Christ. My neighbor just like exploded. Um, so. I oh, did you hear that? It was like straight up thunder. Um, so I'm going to grab that foot. Move it here. And then I'm going to move their body so that they feels like they're just standing against the wave wind. Okay. 
And I'm just trying with as much as I can to show a perspective. I think the neighbor like took a tumble or something because that was really, really, really noisy. I think you guys heard it too. And I'm showing a little bit of the top. And I'm showing the back of the foot and the heel. And just like this. And I'm just trying to be as simple as possible. And I'll throw these feet beneath. All right, and then for the jacket, the jacket is a little bit too, for a rain jacket, it's a little bit too foldy. I would, uh, I would say that it needs to be a little bit more billowy, a little bit more circular, um, and less triangular. And if there are bigger folds in there, they're going to be very, very slightly rendered. So, subtle drops. Very, very subtle. For the feet, I'm going to throw in a nice shadow towards the top. And just below the feet, I'm going to bring in a very, very high ambience kind of, or reflective diffusion cast shadow under the character. So we've brought everything back to the most basic core components. We're not uh, using any kind of tips or tricks right now that will make the character look more interesting or the general picture look more interesting. We've brought things down to very, very simple components. And I still think the character is too large for the drawing. Um, so when we shrink them, let me just compress them a bit. We get more a sense for scale and how small and cute and tiny this character is. And I would say this is doing more for your drawing than a large oversized character. And now we get to look at their destination, look at what they're looking at, and appreciate it a little bit more. So things you can do. <clears throat> if you want to add more drama, and this is where those tricks come in, you can make the character the, the destination they're looking at a little bit more dark. Okay, so we barely have any light on the horizon. Um, and then basically the sun is setting behind them or the, maybe the, the shoreline is opposite to the, to, the pre, to the direction of the sun. That means that the glow on this little, uh, what's it called again? Lighthouse? Is going to be a lot more bright. Okay, so I'm going to get their yellow and use it on the lighthouse. Okay, and then when we're talking about the light of the lighthouse, the glow, I'm going, uh oh, Photoshop's crashed. Not responding. Crud. This has been doing this. It's just been doing this. Shit. Um. I have no idea what to do. I'm just cl closing random shit and seeing what happens. I don't know why green shot has crashed. Okay. It's not crashed anymore now, I guess. <coughs> it's fucking freaking out. My whole computer is crashing. Exit. I have no idea what's 
why this happens. Fucking Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to get my dodge tool and illuminate the distance a little bit. Give it that nice glow. And then I'll select this color. And just throw a really, really delicate ray in one direction. I don't want to throw it away from the painting. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to show kind of what it's, what it's pointing to. And bring the, uh, the line of sight back towards the painting. That looking away and pointing away is just bad. It's going to cancel out the focal point, which should be the center. And then we have some of this texture that needs to be represented a little better. Raising the horizon line color back up. And then you have the option of kind of bringing in those really low, heavy patterns to the clouds. That you can mess around with, with smudge brush. I'm not really on a time limit at all. So I'm going to try to push this painting as far as possible. And I'm getting rid of some of this excess detail on the edges of the canvas and then try to focus most of the detail towards the center. So we have a really, really simple, believable atmosphere around the character now. And the more simple you get with your representation, the better your character will pop out. And sometimes there's like a belt of light just moving across the surface of the water. Like wherever the water kind of um, gets some light on it. Just like a random highlighter line just towards the center. And then I'm going to let some of that sand color seep into the shoreline. Because technically the water gets thinner the closer it gets to the shore, creating that uh, distortion and change of color. I'm going to cast the cast shadow. I'm going to just see what I can do with it. Maybe there's a, a car light nearby or something. The longer the cast shadow, the more artificial, if it's, at night, if, it, if it's at nighttime, the more artificial the, um, the source. So a longer cast shadow feels like there's like a car casting it, do you see? Like there's some kind of car or something. Like two pieces here of shadow. Like for either foot, something like that. And so it's your choice really how you mess around with this. I like this shadow. So I'm going to keep it and I'll put it on darken. And it's just going to just gently represent the character's environment. Maybe I'll mess around with the shadow a little bit more. And you see how there's no harm in letting the edge of the canvas get bright. It really feels like we're in like a stormy day now because we darken the environment according to what we're seeing. And I'm going to distort the far part of the horizon with smudge brush. Again, the smudge brush is also available on my store if you want it. Not too much. That's too large a brush. Shrink it a little. Okay. And then we're going to talk about the character. So the character saturation is a little bit too high. We really don't need that much for it to read as yellow. 
and we're gonna choose a darkened value and I'm gonna go into greens because I'm trying to cool down but it might not be the right value I'm just gonna have to swatch and see it's way too green what the fuck um, sorry for the swearing uh, so I'm moving over into gray that should hopefully bring in enough green And I'm just going to block in generally where I feel like the shadows would be in this raincoat. And the boots, which aren't really feeling like wellies, like wellingtons. I feel a little bit like oversized for babies, so I'm going to shrink them a bit. Just literally crop off the feet. It'll look like more like children's feet. And then that vibrance that we had at one point, after I blend actually, that vibrance that we had in the yellow, I'm going to use that only for whatever's being highlighted. So that vibrance right here, I'm going to use it for like the top part over here. Just the major sections that are getting some light on them. And I think the shape of the hood is a little bit unrealistic. Okay, relax. And when someone's wearing a rain jacket, usually the hood is open right it's not really gonna get that little bump at the end like a witch's um, cloak so it kind of just straightens out and we don't really get that shape and we get less of a wrinkle here but if you want it to read like a kid then the head has to be big so I'm just gonna resize the head in whatever shape we lost And then we, I want to show you that yellows look yellow still if they're not using warm values. So this yellow feels like it fits into the environment a little bit more. I mean, if it was up to me, I'd be desaturating and then kind of just trying to get as much of the yellow out as possible while still it looking like yellow. Um, so this is where it was. It seems a bit warm, right, now that we look at it the previous yellow because the environment is just so cool we're not gonna have that kind of yellow in our environment because technically what you're supposed to be doing is getting your, your soft brush grabbing the environment color going into color lay, uh, color brush mode and then brushing it over because that's that's how you get a color or an object that fits into its environment Just take a look at that it really really fits in Okay, um, so that's technically how we're supposed to be getting that yellow to match its environment, just like so. So you can be getting some of that vibrance back in other ways, but at the end of the day, you're the one who chose a really, really overcast, almost nighttime scene to display uh, this story. So some stuff we can mess around with is just messing around with how bright the distant light is not too bright because then you're just not really using the appropriate uh, kind of light environment anymore some other stuff we can be doing is just showing how this little cloud may have a bit more light behind it so we're showing the layers of atmosphere but we're not exiting again the light environment we're trying to overdo it um, some of the water here is a touch too dark still. So. I'm just raising that color. And then the rest is just all messing around with the waves. Uh, so bringing in some sand texture. So stormy beach images. Let's move into this so we can have 
Um, this is a painting. Um, overcast. Oh, this is perfect. Uh, so you can see these colors here. It's a bit bright. It's a bright day, so it's still the sun is pretty high. Um, this this might be a composite painting. Um, something like this, kind of perfect for us. So you can get some of those really strong uh, value changes. So what we get is a the shape of the the wave. And like really only the top of the wave gets the gradient moving down. And the rest of the wave just kind of melts back in. I'm going to use burn tool really quickly. Oops. Okay, so we just keep that pattern going and then the waves get a little bit more layered the closer they get. The top of the wave gets a bit more light. I don't think I'm ever going to find a setting or system that comes without flaws on, on this setup here. And like of all the people in the world, I really need a flawless setup so that I'd have no more driver problems, no more pen pressure problems, and I just actually have a pain-free critiquing experience. For the foam in our reference, we can just see that it's just layered and textured in between, so we're we're just making the shape of the edge of the wave. We're just going to get a pure white in that light environment. And we're brushing it in. And we're getting a bit more of that texture. Nothing too bright. And if you want to break it apart, smudge it, go back, add some micro texture. Go ahead. I'm going to keep it very simple because I don't want too many a aspects to this that kind of mess around. And the further we get into the horizon, the more flat the waves get. They, they get less elevated, but these, just the general pattern should be flat. And I'm going to use the mid-tone into the background. And I'm going to try to... the same thing here but with the light tone. We're just getting some more texture. So I feel like storytelling wise it really does feel better to me when I have realism present. I'm going to uh, get and if you're not going to go for realism you want more of that childish lack of realism that wonderful wonder, you know, of children's books, um, then go for a stylization. Go for a, a good stylization, anyway. Nothing over-dependent or out of control. Uh, the, the ray of light would be brighter and more saturated the closer it gets to the source. And the dodge tool is there. Like I want this to feel like a real space. And like the yellow of the light is welcoming the yellow of the jacket. And I feel like the jacket is still not billowy enough. It feels flat. So filter, liquefy. I want it to feel, oops. I want it to feel like it has more volume, more air moving through it. And I also want the character to feel like they've been pushed against the wind a little bit. And so the start of the jacket is more flat and the end of the jacket is more billowy. So and then the and the billows are so big the bumps of the folds are wider. And I wanna just make a bit more of a believable back shape. 
and a stronger billow shape. Um, I don't know what's going on with liquify anymore. to make the head feel a little bit larger make the character more short mm, not yet I'm gonna go into the background and color correct a bit If you want to add some more layers of clouds, maybe the top of this cloud right here got some of that light. Oops. Got some of a pale light or something. Just sitting on the top of it. Top of that cloud. And we're smudging. The more you smudge, the better the cloud will look, but don't erase the cloud or the bumps you apply. So I already, so I, the, the, the silhouette I chose of this cloud was, was considering the cast shadow on it. Maybe I'll keep it like that. Okay, and then we have lower hanging clouds towards the horizon. So less cartoony clouds, more realistic clouds. <clears throat> and a reference you can never go wrong choosing a reference so the horizon right now is looking a little bit lopsided which is ruining the read so it needs to be more flat and so we're raising it up Using those lines to help show how flat it is. Zooming out so you can really see if it's messed up. Okay, so it was a little bit lopsided, which didn't look very realistic. Um, and just the top of this cloud lost a little bit of definition. So I'm going to use a brighter backdrop for the cloud. Reveal its shape instead of a darker cloud. And the thing with nature or anything that represents nature, a ray of lightning, a cloud silhouette, is all about learning to dance your hand in the shape of the texture. It's all about changing the way your hand moves. Mm, I'm not that comfortable with this new cloud. I liked it when there wasn't one. Probably before that. And then I'm just going to select this, paste it, and reflatten. <clears throat> so, any questions at all about these changes? Um, the character is still looking extremely out of place. Uh, so it's a combination of perspective, the character not properly looking in the direction they're supposed to look. Oh, the fog is somewhere in the wrong layer. Mm, where to? Okay, and there might be a little bit of fog closer to the horizon. Mm. 
there might be some fog sitting on top. The environment, I mean, could be dropped a little bit darker. And stylistically, you can saturate the yellow back in. It's just going to be really tricky finding a balance. You can just like over stylize it or you can just copy what it would what it would be in real life somewhere there I guess um, you need to bring in the universal color on top which is that blue on top of the yellow which is what's allowing this to be visible um, you can go for some deeper shades of yellow down into oranges because there's no such thing as dark yellow and you can try for some deeper pockets in the folds um, just to unify the character with their environment and I'm going to darken mid-tones the start of the shadow just to show how dark the environment is now that I darkened everything else. It can be a very general shadow underneath the character if you don't want that. You want to have a big floating shadow underneath the character. You can enlarge the character a little bit more. I think the general read of the character is also coming off not perfectly. I'm a perfectionist. I really want it to be perfect. Maybe a larger head. That's too large. larger head might help make it read as a kid a little better. I don't know why it's either giving me an oversized I don't know why it's not just giving me a slightly larger it's just getting really big. Maybe this is good. Okay, so if this was a book cover, you're kind of good at the moment. Um, for the perspective, for the... This is the legs right here. For the gesture of the character, for any other story elements, you're going to need a bit more than a character, a, a dim beach, and a lighthouse in the distance that's too small. You're going to have to provide something else. Um... Maybe that car light might be a good idea, which means the entire outer side of the character would be in some light, and then there would be a light moving on them, so like some kind of light on the ground from the car. It's, this is terrible representation of it, but just as a quick idea. But there's nothing else going on, and so it's not reading as realistic. Because we need to have a bit more elements to carry some more new realism in. But let me see what I can do with what time I have left. So any questions, just write at Isirak to ask a question. The wind, especially during storms, blows from the sea ocean towards the land. The jacket should be flowing in the opposite side. There you go. I didn't know that. Um, so the jacket could be... Maybe it's just like a billowing wind. Maybe we caught a moment where the wind is blowing toward. Um, I was at the beach today and I saw that the wind was blowing across the beach. Uh, so the wind was with the beach um, across the length of it. So this is uh, kind of okay for me. Um, but if, yeah, if, if it's an ocean beach, it might be different than a lake beach, which is where I was. And the character could be darker moving up. So I'm going to get burn on mid-tones and just darken the boots a bit. Darker moving up. The darker the character is, the more yellow we get without having to kind of over highlight the character. But it's kind of your choice at the end of the day where you want to go. 
when it comes to the character because I don't know their story. All I know is what's looking realistic and what isn't. Maybe a bit more contrast on the character. It's really hard to decide. I don't want to take away too much from what you made. But I want to add as much realism as I can afford in the time I have. So I'm going to take it back to before I did all these crazy changes. Um, I want the head to be bigger. Before it was too small, as you can see. So it's looking like a child again. Um, cast shadow could be changed. And it's, you choose the ground level color. Under the character, moving there. It doesn't have to be a, it can be a drop shadow, it doesn't have to be a cast shadow or a very long shadow moving up. Which means this lower part is also a little bit um, darker. For the character, I really recommend a change in the gesture as well. That might help. Uh, so you have this gesture, which looks a little bit more cute and childlike. So you can bring that in. It looks a little bit more desperate, adorable. And, um, you know, like the child is cute, but desperate for an answer at the same time. Kind of just ran to the beach, a little bit tired from the weight of their jacket. And that'll give you a more realistic representation of what happens when a hood is on. Um, there's that as well. Maybe the child is looking away from the light, uh, from the lighthouse in the direction. Or you can just take this gesture as it is and then just show that the child is still looking in the direction and just not show the side of the face. So you have a lot of cool gestures like this one right here. It reads better. Maybe the hood doesn't stay on. I mean, I've been on the beach in the fall and the wind is crazy sometimes so a hood just does not stay on you actually have to wrap a scarf around your head so you could show that and so we get a little bit more of the story is it a girl what is she doing what's she looking at what's so important you see how all these cool little outfits maybe this one is really really cool take away that extra little backpack bit and you have a really really cool um, gesture the character is looking down they're sad they're disappointed someone's not coming home I'm just gonna cry because I did not want to see that picture. Fuck you, Google. Fuck you to hell. I'm sorry. Um, you have so many different references to use, and uh, this is a really, really good reference on how the colors should look in a stormy scene. Okay, so we've got lots of green and reflected in because of the surrounding green. It's, it's, a, it's a higher time of day though. It's a lighter, brighter time of day than we have here. This is also easy to use as a reference. You can have one of these. <laughs> so hopefully this critique has helped you kind of correct what's surrounding the character and think about it a little bit better instead of having symbolic positioning of different light components represented symbolically flat, having the light point away from the canvas, there's no need to do that. Excessive texture on the surface of the beach, you don't need all of that representation there. We just need to have a better focal point, which is underdone. The color for the, for the, for the, for the jacket, I guess, was fine before. It was fine. My edits are all. Okay, but the background needed a little bit more correction. So let's flatten it without my piece, without my dude. Oh no, no, I'm gonna need it. Maybe I'll just resaturate mine. All right, so let's just keep it there. And then flatten. And then you can just find a middle ground between the two. If you do saturate now, everything is saturating together. <clears throat> you can also mess around with levels a little bit more and make that back light in the distance really, really light up. Where are you? 
So I'm going to edit that picture out for the uh, for the recording. Okay, I'm not going to keep that picture on that we found on Google. Um, yeah, the, the yellow coat is very aesthetically pleasing, but I don't think the gesture is doing a whole lot. Your gesture before was looking completely to the side. There are other things that we just looked up, child in, I just, all I googled was child in raincoat. And I really, really like this one. Where is that gesture one? I don't know, look at these cute babies. This one here, I really like this one. It looks a bit more sad in the distance. But do you see how yellow can read as green? Um, so I would just be careful with the kind of yellow we're using in this dark environment. I, th I don't think it's possible for yellow to be this bright as we darken the scene. I think it would be a lot more desaturated. Please do not Google child unsure. Please. Oh, you're just going to Google it, aren't you? Um, less of those bumps. I think Levels brought those out. Okay, and mess around with subsurface scattering on the waves, look up a good reference, find a better, I guess, pattern if you want for the clouds. But I hope this is a nice start, a title. Um, no framing, you don't need framing all around because I think you overdid the framing. What we're trying to do here is find a realistic version of your drawing. Um, so there really wouldn't be framing in the real world, so we're just not using it. And this, plus a better gesture and a, and a more appropriate yellow, a one that you know will take a bit more experimentation than we have time for today, will really complete the piece. I hope this critique hour has, has kind of shown you what goes into completing a full illustration. You need to think about the environment around the character first before you make any major decisions that have to do with the color of the object, the main and uh, object like the focal point which is the character here um, because if you don't know what the time of day is how are you gonna how are you, how are you supposed to decide how are you gonna supposed to decide the color on the character <laughs> yeah a little bit too straight it is feels robotic very unsettling yes um, and uh, we have do you know any good tutorials on how to use Photoshop effectively I'm not sure what you mean effectively the, the, the tools I use. How could you add more depth and shadow to a yellow object without making it muddy? By saturating the shad shadows and using an environment color to help with highlights. So you bring in a yellow white or a white uh, to help with the highlights so that you can make the object pop in its environment as it responds to its environment. Because there's no such thing as dark yellow, it's just green or poop. So you want to bring in some orange or darken with green um, actual shift into green, a hue shift, to help darken the yellow while still having a believable color exist there. Because yellow is brightness and there's no such thing as a dark light. It's the brightest color in the color wheel. It's very difficult to mess around with or shade because it needs to stay bright in order to stay yellow. So we use other colors to help it look yellow as it darkens. <coughs> Um, it looks like a cheap book cover, no offense though. Um, but that is going to be a very serious child's book. Um, not really, because I've seen children's books have these kinds of like uh, covers in them, or very dramatic themes and lemony snicket books, uh, something like that. So, yeah. Or maybe they didn't lose their father at sea. Maybe they're waiting for their father to come home. That's all. Very similar to what we see in Ponyo. Uh, so that's another thing. What you can do is combine different styles. So you can make the main character have more of a cell shaded look with this um, kind of realistic backdrop. But careful with uh, over detailing the waves. Um, and the direction of the cast shadow is still very troublesome. All right, guys, thank you everyone for watching. If you guys want to join our community uh, challenge, go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon to join our Reddit community. 
um, and look at the pinned uh, message at the top of the community, new community challenge, elemental character design. Uh, if you want to become an apprentice, uh, there's an apprentice showcase describing what goes into being an apprentice on my Patreon. If you want to support for anything less, that is welcome to. And there is no minimum skill level for patrons. All patrons are welcomed. Um, there are there is alternative homework outside of uh, uh, challenging challenges um, or high level challenges in my apprentice group. If you want to join as a patron, please do. It helps keep this community alive. It helps give us a place to come to every Tuesday and Thursday. If you've always visited for years um, and you want to support, you want to give back somehow and keep the channel uh, alive and well, you can support through Patreon. It supports me directly and opens up my schedule so I can always do stuff like this. And, um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for coming. Next class will be on Thursday the 25th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And my last class with you guys will be the 6th, the due date of the Elemental Character Design Challenge at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday the 6th, uh, Tuesday, August 6th. After that, I'll be off to Puerto Rico, and I'll be back towards the end of August. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you guys uh, on Thursday. Bye.